Okay, so the next oversimplification uh, involves the maxillary sinus. So how do you treatment plan molars in the posterior maxilla? I'm going to show you some oversimplifications again on what we're looking for in the cone beam CT. So let's go back to the whiteboard. So obviously you know what a uh, maxilla looks like, right? And, and the sinus. So we're going, to be, we're going to be placing our implant into this spot right here. And so let's just go ahead and draw it in. I'll do some like bright green color for the implant. Implant is a tapered cylinder, remember? So when we place our implant, um, we have a limited space, right? Up here, premolar, like uh, first premolar forward, we have abundant space usually. But now back here, we have a little bit of limited space. Sometimes there's not even that much bone there. This is like still some generous amount of bone. Um, so in order to place our implant, what I'm looking for is at least eight millimeters. So eight millimeters of height. I don't know if you can see that very well. Let's see, I'm gonna write eight right here. Eight millimeters of height right here. Now, if we go into the maxillary sinus, let me blow that up even more. So if we go into the maxillary sinus and actually break past the floor, so let me go ahead and delete some of that. There is a membrane, right? There's a sinus membrane right here. There's a sinus membrane right here. And if we drill through here and accidentally puncture that, uh, will cause some problems, right? So we don't want to puncture that membrane. Uh, we don't want to introduce bacteria into the sinus. We want to be respectful of that membrane and try not to disrupt it too much. But if our implant did go past the floor of the sinus, say like a couple of millimeters, um, sometimes that membrane or often that membrane is able to regenerate over that implant, right? The, the, the new sinus level will be a little bit higher. Sometimes bone is actually able to, to build on top of that. That's why, so, that's why sinus lifting works. So we're able to go beyond a little bit, but I prefer not to if I don't have to. So if I have eight millimeters of bone, then I can still say, stay fully encased in bone, and I can take my implant all the way, all the way up to that floor of the sinus and you can even break that floor of the sinus just a little bit without sticking your drill all the way through. Without doing that, you can just break the floor just a little bit and engage your implant there and you're totally solid. Uh, so that is, that's why I look for eight. If it's, if it's less than eight, sure, there are still ways you can make it work. You can place a shorter implant, you can do uh, sinus augmentation, you can do osseodensification. There are things you can do, but I'm looking for eight right here. If there's eight millimeters of bone, it's looking pretty good for me in terms of placing an implant in my cone beam. And we are gonna look at this stuff, um, we are gonna look at this stuff in a cone beam scan, but you need to understand it here first before we move on to that scan. So I hope that makes sense.